So, hey there everybody, it's Kathleen Mackay here. Um, I have been inspired by my daughter, Brenna Mackay, to share some of, actually to share the truth of what really goes on around here. Um, Brenna has trisomy 18, and three years ago she lost three quarters of her bowel. Um, so she only has, from her mid-traverse, down to her descending traverse to her colon. That's all she has. Nothing else. No um, small intestine. Nothing. It's gone. <laughs> oh, and she has a stomach. So that's good. And the beauty is she no longer has an ileostomy, which we need to deal with. Um, as a practitioner of the law of attraction, I've chosen only to, uh, in the past, to share what's good. Hence why there's hardly any footage except for still photos. Because um, a lot of the material I have is quite graphic. Um, and you can find that on her page at... Um, just search Brenna Mackay, it'll come up. I can't remember what it's offhand. Uh, I'll pop the link down below anyway. Um, so yes, uh, I was prompted to write this as um, one of our beautiful teachers uh, tagged me in another lady's story and so um, they are having issues and whether they're related to ours or not I can't say, however I thought it's time I started really sharing the good, the bad and most importantly a lot of the ugly because this is a new journey um, that many may begin. I'm finding now as short gut syndrome and bowel issues seem to go hand in hand with trisomy 18. So here goes. Um, our experience with the leaking problem, gastrostomy leakage, uh, ours was mainly around the pig area. Um, so we experienced this from the time Brenna was three till she lost three quarters of her bowel. And um, really extreme surgery for such a little child. And if we believe what medical people say, more so for trisomy 18 children. Um, so anyway, we experienced a lot of leaking and random vomiting. Brenna had had a Nissen fundification, which is a sleeve um, wrapped around just uh, above the stomach, below uh, in the esophagus, I think. I, to be honest, you know, I didn't go looking at any stuff for a long time because, as a practitioner of the law of attraction, to look at the negative side of um, anything is to attract that. So for a long time, you know, I couldn't sort of go there but now I do so I've only just found out at uh, end of last year what part of Brenna's um, bowel she actually lost I never knew I've always said three quarters of a bowel and to me in the beginning a bowel was just one organ so you know I never even I couldn't even um, interpret in my mind what she had actually lost and how radical that surgery was. All I knew is one moment she was a healthy little girl and the next she was on life support, not expected to make it through the night, you know. So, and the fact that I couldn't even interpret what had just happened to her was a good thing because I kept saying, thinking in my mind, she's going to wake up in the morning, all will be well and we'll just go home, you know. Uh, I just couldn't even compute what was going on in that moment, which in hindsight now, uh, as a practitioner of the law of attraction, um, it was a good thing because I never drew any negative emotions towards myself because I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't comprehend it. Um, anyway, so getting back to this leaky peak for us, um, it was random. She shouldn't have been able to vomit anyway, but she was. So, uh, you know, nobody actually told me the Nissen had failed and that they could fail. I just came out of hospital believing that 
for her to vomit is a bad thing within this implantification because it's there to allow food to go down but to not allow it to come back up again into the um, esophagus and I get up, yeah, up that way, <laughs> you know, medical, not, anyhow, um, we also had this, ran it appeared to happen randomly, this leaky peg, so in the end nobody could really investigate why it happened, these two things happened hand in hand, and so um, it was just put down to, it happens to these kind of children, uh, it's because they're low tone, um, da 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 da, or, you know, too hard bin, but that was okay, I accepted that at the time. And uh, because I wasn't a medical expert, and that's who I looked for to give us guidance. Because once we had outlived, um, once we made it past the age of one, I realised that she, you know she wasn't going to die like they had said. You know she was here, and so this is it. And that put us into a, a, a unknown field that I didn't really know, and because I wasn't actively looking because everywhere I looked the information I saw was just it didn't apply to us I just couldn't even comprehend that that was my daughter and that was the condition she had the, you know the pictures I saw were horrific so I didn't go there and I isolated so right up until Brenna was seven and she lost three quarters of a bowel that was the moment I became in a field of our own, no one to compare her to, and yeah, it was, it's a wilderness out here, and so it's taken me another three years to come to terms to where this, this has led us, so that means I have to share with you guys. Um, Uh, yes, so anyway, the four years from the time Brenna was three till she lost her bowel, three quarters of her bowel, um, we experienced this leaky peak and we just accepted that's the way life was until she had this catastrophic event um, and got she, she, you know, Brenna is so resilient, so she, it's hard to really gauge where her pain threshold is because she's been through um, quite a lot up until that point in her life. Um, she was three months premature as well, so she's done that. That's another story in itself. Um, so, I believe this was um, the way it was and then she has this catastrophic event that puts us in hospital within two hours from the time she started displaying any symptoms that I wasn't able to recognize as danger signs. Um, so within three hours, four hours, Brenna is in having emergency surgery and oh, and it was exploratory at the time by um, our local uh, gastro surgeon here in Palmerston North. Um, instincts guided me to have that done because it was either he could open her up and have a look because she was a very sick little girl and they didn't know what it was, or we could fly to Wellington and have the top paediatrician have a look at her but in my mind I just wanted it sorted quick as possible so we I opted for exploratory surgery of which when it was all over she had lost three quarters of her bowel and was on this life support so that is where our leaky peg was an indicator for what signs were to come and none of us saw it coming None of the medical people interpreted a, leak, a, a randomly leaking, frequently leaking peg as a sign that there were there was bowel issues. And yet, at five months of age, Brenna had had surgery for malrotation, and 
malrotation and trisomy 18 children, if you've got gut issues, you are going to most likely have gut issues for a period of time. And this is what happened for us, but that was totally missed. Now, I don't know if that's relevant to anyone else having leaky peg problems, but I would suggest that all options were explored uh, relating to the bowel. It doesn't hurt to go and have a scan. Um, just see to it. But uh, physical signs you can see for yourself as a parent. A caregiver uh, is a mass swelling and hardness in the trunk. And when it gets... I wouldn't even wait till... Because the onset of that, what it actually does is it puts pressure onto the child's lungs and then it's creating um, a, a, an effect where the gases are blowing up within the uh, trunk cavity and forcing the lungs to push up into the child which then causes breathing issues and that was the stage I realised there was something wrong when there were breathing issues. So. Don't leave it till it's that point. Any swelling in the trunk and hardness, I would totally um, be concerned that there are bowel issues there. That's my two cents. I'm going to cut off here, but um, I will be sharing a lot more of what we've discovered. So, and I'll learn to be mindful about cutting these down because. You know, our lives are so busy. So anyway, thanks for being here. Peace out, guys.